Here we have a Calculus 3 problem that is something we do at the beginning of the course to kind of put the idea of contour maps and linear functions together in the same place. So here we have this contour map that is a map of a linear function. And how do you know that this is a linear function or a plane? Well, because the contours are all parallel lines equally spaced for equally changing z's. So these z's change from 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, so each changing by 2. And each of these are parallel lines. So parallel lines changing at the same rate in z means that it's going to be a linear function or a plane. So what we're supposed to do with this plane, though, is find the equation of the plane whose contour map looks like this. So how do I do that? So I know that the general form of a plane looks like z equals mx plus ny plus c, where m is equal to the change in output over the change in input in the x direction, and n equals the change in output over the change in input in the y direction. And c we calculate by either knowing the z-interception or the some point on the plane that we can substitute in once we have m and n. Now, how you look at this in order to find m and n, you have to see how much z changes on the contour when I change x. Now, notice that I'm changing x for one value of y. That's how you want to do it, change x for one value of y. Now, when I do this, I tend to look from corner to corner on the contours. It's not always possible, but it helps. All right, if I look at this change in x, so my change, I go from this point to this point. My change in x is 3 minus 1, while my change in z, <coughs> I go from 0 minus a negative 2. So that will leave me with 2 over 2, which is 1. So my slope in the x direction will be 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing for y. All right, so I see a corner here. And I'm going to move up this way until I see another corner here. So I say to myself, OK, the change in y, I go from 0 minus negative 6, 0, which is this axis right here. And oh, that's not negative 6. That's negative 2. See how easy it is to make a mistake? That's the change in y is what I'm looking at. Now if we do the change in z, the change in y is the y values, these values here. So 0 minus negative 2. If I want to do the change in z, it's going to be 0 minus negative 6, which will give me 6 over 2, which is 3. So now, so far, my equation is z equals 1x plus 3y plus c. Now, many students are saying, why did you put the 1 in front of the x? Well, you don't need to. It's just for emphasis to show you where the numbers go. Now, I see an ordered pair here right in the middle. This is a nice one. So x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0. So the ordered triple 0, 0, 0 is on the graph. I can plug it in, 0 for z, 0 for x, 0 for y, and I solve for c and c turns out to be 0. Now that was an easy one, but again, the process is the same. You find one ordered pair on the graph. So let's see if I can find another one here, like this ordered triple right here. That's going to be minus 1, minus 1, minus 4. Okay. You can pick another one over here. How about uh, this one here? That's going to be 2, 2, 8. So either one of those ordered pairs, including this one here at the origin, can be used here to find value for c. And you'll find out that the value for c should be the same no matter what order triple you have. So my final equation is going to be z equals x plus 3y.